Good morning, and welcome to Faith Anglican Church on this World Mission Sunday. A wonderful day for us to focus outwardly on those two billion people that have never even heard of Jesus and the billions more that uh, are without Christ. So our worship this morning on this uh, World Mission Sunday uh, will begin with some gathering music.
Our opening hymn is Open Your Ears. So let's stand and sing.
on this World Mission Sunday. I will make you as a light for the nations. That my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Together let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, you revealed the way of eternal life to every race and nation. Pour out this gift anew, that by the preaching of the gospel, your salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall rise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 96. Please respond by half verse. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing, sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. His marvelous works among all peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols. But the Lord of the name of the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength, Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Bring an offering and come out to his course. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge his peoples with equity. 
Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing the joy. Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. The Lord reigns you, you are Lord Christ. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see his hands, the mark of the nail, and place my fingers into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God that by believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We have seated. Our preacher this morning is that the Reverend Dr. Gordon Pike, who has served as missionary in South Texas and Venezuela, which is a very difficult part of the world today, and also in Costa Rica, and is professor and associate dean, I think, at Prometha. teaches, writes, and speaks in Spanish. But I think you're going to do it in English today, right? Okay. Okay, we'll great. See, we'll see what happens. Praise the Lord. I'm not used to talking in public in English very much, but we'll give it a try. <laughs> see what happens here. <clears throat> please uh, join me for a moment uh, in prayer before we begin, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the gift of the Holy Spirit who is among us right now and dwells in our hearts. And so Holy Spirit, we ask that um, you would take that which is true to your word that's spoken and that is according to the will of our Father and that you would open our hearts to that and make our hearts receptive to that, which is according to our Father's will. Anything that is of man or simply my opinion and that would be counter to our Father's will and counter to God's word, then that you would make us discerning of that and help us to understand and to uh, uh, make wise decisions and accept that which is true and discern that which is false. Help us then, Lord, to have the open hearts, to hear your word <clears throat> as we sang earlier this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, I don't really believe that I've uh, ever begun a sermon the way I'm beginning it this morning. And I have 
preached hundreds of sermons, perhaps thousands, I don't know, but at least hundreds of sermons in English and in Spanish. And this morning I'm going to recommend a book as I begin the sermon this morning. Just a month or two ago, I, uh, I read a book that was written and published in the year 2000 called God and the Pandemic uh, by <clears throat> Anglican bishop and uh, scholar, theologian, N.T. Wright, who I happen to be a fan of. I really enjoy his writings. To be honest with you, his more deep and scholarly uh, uh, writings get me lost real fast, and I just I get lost in them, but his more popular books I really enjoy, and this is one of the more popular level books. It's easy reading, it's a, a short book, written in the year 2000. Um, he couldn't, he isn't a prophet, or he doesn't have the, I think he actually does have a gift of prophecy as in uh, telling some really hard and challenging truths, which prophets do, but as far as foretelling the future, he does not have that. <clears throat> and therefore, um, some of the things that he thought might happen as the pandemic unfolded um, maybe didn't unfold exactly the way he thought they might happen as we have looked back on the last uh, several years of the pandemic. Some of the things that he feared might happen and hoped wouldn't happen, especially that he feared might happen in the church, the Western church, um, unfortunately have happened. His, some of his worst fears have been realized, much to our shame. <clears throat> Some of the things that he hoped maybe would happen, excuse me, I got too close to the mic and boomed into it there and breathed too heavy in it. Sorry about that, folks. Anyway, some of the things that uh, uh, he feared might happen, have happened. Some of the things he hoped maybe would happen have begun to happen. Some haven't yet. So anyway, um, I just recommend it's really good reading. If you're a person like me that likes to see the perspective of people a little bit different from us, people that look at things from a different culture, he's, in, he's British, uh, he's not American, uh, he's not North American, um, and you like to see how people from other parts, especially Christians <clears throat> from other parts of the world think and see things, it's really refreshing. And so I recommend that book to you. It's well worth reading. Uh, so I trust by God's grace this sermon is based on God's word, but I will admit that uh, it's heavily influenced by this book and the reading of it. Well, anyway, what in the world does the pandemic have to do with World Mission Sunday? or with a sermon about global missions? Well, there are several reasons, I believe. First of all, as it has done to just about every aspect of life on this globe, the pandemic has created new challenges and new opportunities for world missions. Let me give you an example from Norma's and my own life throughout what used to be called the third world, which was always a misnomer, uh, and is, which is now much better known as the majority world, in other words, where most of humanity lives. Uh, one of the biggest needs of the church has been for a long time to train pastors, train other capable church leaders to be able to lead the church. Uh, most of the time, almost, well, not exclusively, but most of the time, local people, people that know the culture, know the language well, are quite a bit better able to take and lead and disciple people in their own culture to Christ and help them to know Christ. But they're not always, they don't always have the tools to really know how to go ahead and lead churches and get them established into really <clears throat> healthy, functioning, mature, vibrant churches. They need to know how to go on to those steps of becoming mature. They need training in leadership, training in 
pastoral care and all of the things that basically lay people here in North America take for granted. I think a lot of times they don't understand necessarily all of the training and, and really high level education that goes on to prepare uh, pastors and leaders and all that, that goes on and that they don't have access to. So for many years, uh, that has been a, a, a real large need in that part of the world. Well, God, our Heavenly Father, in His mercy and grace, at least looking at Latin America, my part of the, of the world, um, He laid it on the hearts of several uh, missionary educators in Latin America about 23, 24 years ago, he laid it on the hearts of several of them to take what many people in that part of the world, and especially uh, their colleagues, thought was the most ridiculous step they could ever take. Back in the late 1990s, he laid it on their hearts to take the step of beginning to provide education on the internet, of all things. Now, why in the world would anybody do anything that stupid? <laughs> the internet, I mean, good grief, the internet. You spend 15 or 20 minutes with a, a, a tone going beep, 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 till finally you connect to some kind of a hairy thing, and then you spend the next 20 minutes while this little tiny thing kind of finally comes down, well, you don't remember it, you weren't born yet. But some of the rest of us remember it. You know, and that's what the internet was. But God laid it on their hearts and they continued and continued and continued. And then lo and behold, in 2020, all of a sudden, Prometa, which was what grew out of all of that, had become the one of, if not the premier, the most highly regarded theological education provider by internet in that part of the world. And everybody started looking at us saying, how in the world do we do this? Because all of our residential schools are just closing down because nobody can come anymore because all of our countries are completely closed down because of the pandemic. And now what's happening in 2022 is the uh, department that I led for many years that really just was kind of limping along with just me and the department. Now there's um, seven people, staff under my leadership, and there's so many students trying to get into it, trying to learn how to provide accompaniment and pastoral care and personal counseling and all to the people that are coming to them in crisis in their lives because of the pandemic that um, I have to admit to you, I find myself just in panic mode a lot of the times lately, just trying to keep up with everything and trying to juggle all the balls and trying to go. And that's what the Lord is doing now through the pandemic in my part of the world. Well, the second reason I believe that the pandemic has so much to do with global missions is because the church, as we look at worldwide missions or global missions, we have to realize that world missions is not something the church does. It's exactly what the church is. Amen. The church is the body of Christ in the world. The church is Jesus' people doing his will, seeking his kingdom in every region, every language, every culture. So therefore it is God carrying out his mission in his world <clears throat> through his people. That's what the church is. That's what world missions is. Therefore, what affects the world affects the church, affects missions. 
So the pandemic has everything to do with world missions because it affects the world and it affects the church. It affects who we are. It affects who we are in the world. What the church does, therefore, whether for good or for bad, affects world missions, affects the world. It has everything to do with what we're all about, why we exist. It's all tied together. <clears throat> Let's look then, therefore, at the at global missions, the motivation. Why global missions? Let's leave the question out for a couple minutes of, of uh, who's speaking here as we look at Isaiah 61 that we read earlier. Um, the servant of the Lord says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Um, this servant of the Lord, he could be a person, he could be a, a, a he, could be a she, it might even be a group of people. Actually, in Isaiah, the spirit of this servant of the Lord shows up various times. <clears throat> Sometimes it appears to be the future Messiah. Sometimes it appears to be the nation of Israel. Sometimes it appears actually to be Isaiah himself. It, it varies at times throughout the book of Isaiah. So right, right now, let's not worry about who the servant of the Lord is. But this servant of the Lord says, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. In the Old Testament, before the day of Pentecost, when God's Spirit came on the apostles and the other people that were gathered waiting for that event, <clears throat> at the time that the church was inaugurated by the Holy Spirit, before that time, there were different times that the Spirit of the Lord came on his people, but he didn't dwell with his people all the time. He came for special events. Uh, some examples were that, I love that were like Gideon when he needed to, uh, to fight the Midianites. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him for that task of, of fighting the Midianites. Or uh, when uh, Samuel anointed Saul, then the Spirit of the Lord came on Saul to, to be the king until Saul disobeyed and then the Spirit of the Lord was taken away from him. There are other times, uh, similar times for that. <clears throat> it was kind of like uh, various times when, when that happened, that the Spirit of the Lord was there for a special task or role. Um, so the motivation that this servant of the Lord had for, for, uh, for his task at this point was that the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. So he was uh, moving, the Spirit of the Lord was moving his servant to do his work. But also, what was his authority? He not only said that he was motivated because the Spirit of the Lord was upon him, but he said also that the Lord has anointed me. So we see what the global missions, what the authority is. The Lord has anointed me. Anointing was, uh, was a, a way in the Old Testament before the Holy Spirit dwelt with his people all the time after Pentecost. Anointing was how kings and priests were set apart and were authorized to fill, excuse me, were authorized to fulfill their roles. It was kind of like an ordination or a coronation or a, a swearing in today. It was how these people were set apart for their roles. So the servant of the Lord was authorized or was, was set apart for a specific role as he was anointed by the Spirit of God and authorized to fulfill a role. So then let's consider what this servant of the Lord was supposed to do. Let's look at global missions, the task. And here is where we see uh, a list of six things that the uh, servant of the Lord was supposed to do. There's six things that are uh, listed here. We're gonna only concentrate on three of them for time's sake this morning. All six are important, but I wanna highlight three of them this morning. 
First of all, we see that the uh, servant of the Lord was to bring good news to the poor. I think when we see that at this about bringing good news to the poor, our minds often go to uh, acts of charity. And for sure, those acts are really important acts like uh, what we do as we go over to 8th Street Mission or as we uh, do the uh, Christmas shoe boxes or what we're able to do in uh, Bibles for China and, and other uh, charitable things like that. Those are very, very important. But I, I think it's important to us as we, for us as we think about uh, what we do in preaching good news to the poor, to think about um, do we understand as we bring good news to the poor, do we understand it from the perspective of the poor? Do we ever take the time to try to understand things from their side, from their understanding, from their perspective? Perhaps I can give you an example from my own life that uh, has made me think a lot of times over the years. About 34, 35, probably about 34 years ago, uh, when Norma and I and our three, at that time, small children had uh, just moved to Venezuela and uh, were in our first year there of culture shock and getting settled in, <clears throat> we lived in a very small, uh, what was called a parto quinta. It was basically a two-story uh, apartment in a, a four-story uh, apartment building quite cramped, um, quite uh, really, really inadequate apartment that we were living in. And um, in order to help things out a bit uh, and just to be a little bit uh, more attuned to the culture and so on, we had a lady who was actually from uh, Grenada, I think it was, that came in about once a week to help Norma with some of the housework and so on. <clears throat> and uh, she had a little boy that, uh, I think he was around five years old or so, was turning five, who was having a birthday. And one time, uh, Norman and the lady planned a birthday party for the little boy at our, at our house there on a Saturday. And uh, the little boy and, and the lady, and uh, I think it was either her husband or the, the man that she lived with, the, the boy's father anyway, came to, um, to celebrate the birthday at our house. I believe before this, we had gone to visit the family one time um, at their house, which was in one of the sprawling slum, slums on the outskirts of Valencia, where we lived, uh, near the uh, vast industrial um, area of the city, <clears throat> and just a shack that they lived in there. Anyway, um, to uh, try to shorten the story a bit, they came that day, and uh, Norma and I had bought a, uh, what we thought was going to be a really cool uh, gift for this little boy. It was a battery-operated uh, remote control car for the little boy, and we thought this was going to be really cool for this little boy. He, he wouldn't get anything like that probably any way, other way, and this was going to be so neat for this little boy to have. And of course, when he opened the uh, present, he loved it, and he was playing around with it. And The dad, after a couple of minutes, looked at me and he said, Why in the world did you buy him a present like that? Now I've got to buy batteries all the time for me for that thing. I didn't really know what to say. Man, I thought I bought such we bought such a nice present for him. And what do you say? Man. I felt kind of hurt, I felt a bit offended, and I mean, how do you respond? But I thought a lot about it and you know, I think he was right. I didn't take any time to think about it from his perspective. Here he was, sitting in my apartment, which looked pretty darn good from his side of the fence. It had a nice tile floor on two stories. And out front, because of the way inflation had not caught up with the dollar exchange, I had a brand new car sitting in the driveway. 
And he probably worked on the assembly line, putting together that cars just like that. And he'd never ever dream of owning a car like that with the pittance they paid him to put the screws in on the assembly line for that thing. The fact is, he probably spent the little bit of extra money he got that he could have probably used on that Saturday. His only day off that he could have maybe used to have a couple of beers with his buddies that day. He probably used that to spend on at least two buses, maybe three, so he could come with his wife or girlfriend or whatever she was and their son to come over here to this place where he didn't know anybody and he felt completely out of place to celebrate and get this thing so he'd have to spend all of his spending money on batteries for this thing until the thing finally broke. So how is he going to be all happy about this thing? You see what I mean? I didn't listen to the poor when I tried to speak some kind of good news to him. I didn't think about his side of the story. So often we don't think about things from others' perspectives. We need to think, and it happens a lot of times, I think. So also, the servant of the Lord is called to bind up the brokenhearted. My mind goes to, just over the last two years, people like Jonathan Constante, Ecuadorian pastor, just in his early 40s, former student of mine buried his beloved wife, Yvonne, died from COVID early in 2020. Daniel Martinez Sr., Argentine, lives in a rural part of the state of Monagas in Venezuela. He's a lay leader in a small struggling church still mourning the death of his 32-year-old son, Ezekiel, died of COVID-19 over a year ago. He and his wife are still trying to come to grips with how in the world such a young man who loved the Lord could have been taken so young, so early, still trying to help his daughter-in-law raised the baby who was born after Ezekiel died while she still tries to deal with her own grief and how in the world she's going to raise a baby with no money barely hanging on to their faith any of them and then I think about Danielle Martinez Jr. Danielle's son Ezekiel's brother lives in Guatemala married to his Guatemalan wife and so torn up inside by his brother's death that even though he still tries to keep a good face, his wife knows and she tries to keep on hanging on because he still reads Bible stories to their two little children, their two toddlers. But then he turns to them and he says, but you know, kids, it's not really true. God doesn't love us. He killed my brother. And she says, how in the world am I going to ever raise them to love and trust God and Jesus? And then I think about Jose Luis Salas, retired Costa Rican University professor, recently graduated with the Master's of Science of Religion and Christian Leadership <clears throat> from Prometa, still the President of Prometheus Board of Trustees, he's one of the most tender-hearted, passionate to know Jesus men that I have ever known. One of the most responsive students that I've ever had the privilege of teaching. Just lost his youngest brother to COVID the morning of February the 10th. 
As he told the Promethe team about it, he could barely contain, contain his tears when he asked us to please pray because he had to go from that meeting to his mother who was gravely ill herself with COVID while he had to tell her that her youngest son just died from COVID. The servant of the Lord is called to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to proclaim opening of prisons to the bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and God's vengeance. I believe this refers to the year of Jubilee that was decreed by God in Leviticus 25, when all properties would be returned to their original owners, all debts would be canceled, all agriculture land was to be left fallow, and it was to be a great day of rejoicing as social justice would reign and would be enacted throughout the land. It was also one of God's ancient decrees that ancient Israel loved to ignore. And one of the reasons why ancient Israel and ancient Judah eventually were punished so harshly. And then finally, the servant of the Lord was to comfort all who mourn. You see, global crises, worldwide societies that are continued, that continue to be characterized by pandemics, by injustice, by a globe full of humans who are chronically sick chronically sick with illnesses, with sin, with all of the spiritual, physical, mental, social, environmentally, environmental effects of our sin-sick world. We're a world full of mourners. And the servant of the Lord is called to mourn and to comfort those who mourn. So part of the servant's task is to lament, to comfort those who mourn. This then leads us finally to ponder the question of who that servant of the Lord actually is. Global Missions is the church responding in and to this crisis we're in right now and to all the crises down through the work the history of the church and to any crisis that will come down the road until Jesus returns and we enter finally the eternal kingdom of Jesus. Let's look at the church's orders. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus made it clear that he was the fulfillment of these words in Isaiah. Jesus says that it's the Spirit of the Lord that's upon him. The Lord had anointed him to preach the news to the poor, to do all of these tasks. And then we move on over to John chapter 20, and we see something wonderful. He passed the baton on to his disciples, to his apostles, and he said, you know what, just as the Father sent me, just as the Spirit of the Lord anointed me, I'm sending you. Guess what, guys? You get to do the same thing, only I was doing it to Israel primarily. You get to do it to the whole world. Boy, aren't you privileged. Thomas wasn't there at that time, I believe, and that's why, maybe part of why he said, you know what, I want to see if it's really Jesus before I sign up for this. Maybe, I don't know. I'm speculating there. Holy Spirit, you can take that away. That was just me, my opinion. <clears throat> but anyway, he passed the baton on, and then he made it very, very clear in Acts. It's to the whole world. He made it very clear there. And since then, the church has spread around the world. And you know how this church has spread around the world? It's preached good news to the poor. 
It's bound up the broken heart. It's proclaimed liberty to the captives. It's proclaimed the opening of prisons to those who are bound. It's proclaimed the Lord's favor and vengeance. It's comforted those who mourn. This has been the response of the church to countless pandemics, plagues, and crises down through the centuries. And it must continue to be our response today to this crisis and any crisis to come. We must continue to be the voice of godliness, of hope, of reason, of liberty, comfort to a world gone mad with grief, of loss, of hopelessness, of fear, of strife, and justice, and inequality. So I want to conclude with some quotes of Jesus. You know, there's no doubt that in Matthew chapter 28, Jesus commissioned the church to go throughout the world and to preach the gospel and to teach disciples, to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's the usual um, verse or verses that we missionaries like to use. But I'm going to be kind of an oddball or a radical today, and I'm going to use other verses. First of all, in Luke chapter 6, or no, excuse me, Matthew chapter 6. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Then in Luke chapter 6, looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you, and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Finally, Matthew chapter 6. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you. And may God bless his word. Standing together, let us proclaim what we believe through the words of the Nicene Creed about God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, eternally begotten. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God and now made of one being with the Father, who for him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was in heart from the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and in his name then. For our sake he was crucified in the cross of Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again for the course of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken. We believe in one of the holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
before we begin the um, prayers for Global Mission Sunday, uh, the congregation is to be divided into three sections. So the left over here from, from this section will read the parts that say left. The middle are these two sections here. When it says middle at the top, you will read. The right is over here from the sound booth to the worship team, and that is how we will proceed with the, uh, with the prayers of the people. So let's begin. Left. Thank you, Lord, you know the world, that the name of Jesus may be known and worshipped by all people. Middle. Away in the field for nations of the hearts of all your people. Right. Send out laborers into your harvest. Left. Kindle within your people an awareness of mission and a willingness to provide faithful support. Middle. Bless the nations to all unevangelized areas of North America. Restore and glorify your church in the Caribbean and Central and South America. Right. Prosper in the faith and practice of your church in Africa. Raise up faithful evangelists to rebuild the church in Europe. Left. Increase the Christian witness among the peoples of the Middle East. Invigorate those who spread the gospel in China, India, Oceania, and all of Asia. Middle. Grant peace and stability in the Holy Land. That the gospel may be both heard and obeyed. Relieve and protect all members of the church who suffer persecution for the faith. Right. Kindle love of the truth among all nations and peoples. Prosper the ministry to immigrants and to the underprivileged in rural areas and in the inner cities. Left. Raise up laborers to go to the two billion people who are part of the 7,000 people groups who still have no access to the gospel and no part of the Holy Word in their heart language. Middle. Bless medical, agricultural, and micro-enterprise missions done for your glory. Guide and inspire all body translators that your word may be proclaimed in all tongues. Right. Assist with grace all missionaries and their families, both at home and abroad, Enlighten all seekers and strengthen all new converts. Empower them of that task for the game of life and work in your name. Left. Increase evangelism and ministries of mercy in our local <coughs> community and abroad, that all people may come to know and enjoy your salvation and inherit eternal life. Middle. Bless and unify the work of Anglican Global Missions Partners, Anglican Frontier Missions, and all the ministries of the Anglican Church in North America. And the mission work of the Worldwide Evangelical Union. Release the mission field in our hearts to take the gospel message to the ends of the earth. Right. Bless the missionaries sent out and supported by this church. Prepare and anoint all those going to the mission field for short all over the world. And help each one of us to become the everyday missionaries to all those whom you place in our path each day. All together. O oh Lord, you have made us one Lord, all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and those who are near. Grant people everywhere and seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, and confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Isn't that great news? Let's stand together. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Good morning. It's good to be back in church. Last week I was on pain meds. <laughs> so it's good to be back in uh, normal. Uh, if you hadn't noticed, I had some uh, shoulder surgery, so this uh, hand is immobilized for like eight weeks in uh, starting rehab, and things are going really well. Surgery went good. well. So we'll do best we can, and uh, maybe even next week I can vest beyond the stole. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how the arm does. Uh, Gordon, thank you for sharing uh, the Word of God on this World Mission Sunday. We really appreciate you. <clears throat> we thank God for you raising up all these young uh, leaders uh, in Latin and Central America and other places in the world as well. We appreciate your your uh, your ministry. And if you didn't know, um, Gordon and Norma, uh, their their ministry. You know, most professors at seminaries, you go to a seminary and you get a fairly nice salary. Uh, Gordon goes to a seminary, he gets no salary. Uh, so he he uh, he is a missionary, true missionary, educational missionary. So all his financial support comes through gifts through churches like ours, which we do, and individuals like you as well. Um, and of course, on, on World Mission Sunday, we remember we, we support other missionaries throughout the world. Um, most of them, we can't talk about where, what their names are or where they are because 
there in that uh, those places where uh, there's less than one half of one percent Christian, and often those places are, are fairly dangerous. But uh, we're excited. Uh, there's one cu couple that we uh, support that is in um, uh, some place in North Africa. I can say that, and they are doing well, and uh, they're hoping to get into their host country again very soon. Uh, this different things happen in the mission field. So we're praying for them and uh, excited about what God is doing for them. Um, Esco, did you have anything else you wanted to say about world mission? Esco is on our parish council and, and oversees our area of, of uh, missionary support and local missions. So. Well, good morning. Good morning. Uh, some of you who are new or maybe didn't know originally, this church has always had a history of supporting missions at a rate that was pretty much far exceeding most other churches. It was always a, a big idea in this church to uh, support these missions right from the get-go. I'm proud to be part of that. Um, I have two different things, but... Uh, I have a local missions, which we support, Anglican Frontier Mission, Awana, of course, Operation Christmas, Child, William Hearn, the Pikes Educational Missionary Mission, Rwanda Fundraisers, Room of the Goats. Locally, we have the A Street Mission, the Food Offering, Jesus Loves Memphis, Life Choices, that's Janie Atkins. Uh, we have fellowship events. Uh, we have the Epiphany Fellowship Breakfast, which is our pancake breakfast. We just had our annual parish meeting, which we uh, decided to have our Chili and More show Sunday pancake, though, which is part of that. Conference. Uh, Bishop's Mission in Spring, Mother Daughter Tea, Mother Day Brunch, Blessing of the Beast, which was pretty successful. I think we'll keep doing that, of course. A lot of fun. Fall Fellowship Breakfast. We're going to inject the chili cook off. We have, in Sunday, we have two Discovering Faith uh, three times. And, of course, like most churches, we have births, funerals, and weddings. Um, my goal this year, uh, is, like everyone else, is after this pandemic, is to get more people to come to church. We appreciate the people watching. We know you're watching. Uh, we're praying with you. But uh, we'd like to have more of an outward reach of the church that they know not only that we're helping them, but who we are, because I think a lot of times we don't see that as being as important as I think sometimes it really is. And then I have a few more items up my sleeve that I want to um, talk about getting out there yet. Um, Jamie Atkins helped me with, uh, I said this is a lot of things to talk about. And I was going to quote a Joe Cocker song and I'll paraphrase it and she paraphrase it even more. And we get this done with a little help from our friend. Thank you so much. When we do, um, you know, many of our uh, missionaries we support through our budget, which comes through your regular giving. And then uh, throughout the year we have um, opportunities to help fund certain missionary projects. We try not to do them all, you know, <laughs> we don't want you to feel worn out, but you know, a few times a year we do those and many of those Esco was talking about that uh, give us an opportunity to participate in what God is doing around the world and in the community. Um, this next Sunday is the last Sunday of the Epiphany season. Uh, so after this Sunday, we'll be moving into the season of Lent, the 40 days before Easter. Uh, so to commemorate uh, the end of Epiphany and the beginning of Lent, we'll have this Sunday we'll have a Shrove Sunday pancake lunch. 
and we'll also be burning the palms from Palm Sunday. That's what we make the ashes out of for Ash Wednesday. So anyone here, did anyone here like play with fire? Okay, any kids? <laughs> okay, if you're here, you can help me burn the palms for uh, Ash Wednesday. So that's always a lot of fun. And usually the kids enjoy it. So um, that's that. Any other announcements this morning? Okay, well let's, uh, let's pray for those, uh, any of you who've had a birthday or are having a birthday in this month, month of February. We'd just like to ask God's blessing upon you, whether you're here or you're at home. Uh, just stand up, and we'd like to, uh, like to pray for you. Okay. Well, Heavenly Father, for these, we ask your blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for bringing them into this world, giving them life. And throughout this next year, Lord, we ask for your blessing upon them. Protect them from all dangers. And we pray that you would pour out your spirit upon them and draw them closer and closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And if you are celebrating a wedding anniversary this month, we'd love for you to stand. We'd like to pray a special prayer over you. Okay. Well, Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who are celebrating uh, a wedding anniversary. Lord, marriage is such a wonderful and sometimes difficult thing. So, Lord, we ask that you would strengthen them in their love for one another and their uh, modeling of the relationship between the bride of Christ, who is us, and Jesus, who is the, the groom of Christ, if you will. So, Lord, we ask for your blessing upon them, that they will show forth uh, Christ in their families. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Well, let us ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who took our mortal flesh to reveal his glory, that he might bring us out of darkness and into his own glorious light. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit, give before your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him and that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed once for all upon the cross. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. And these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
together, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him and to you and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. So we go forth with the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, not only for us to be blessed, but that we might be a blessing to others. Amen. So now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank you.